I'm Zack Snyder, and this is my review show. I work here by, by myself. Um, everything has a story and a price, including this shitty copy of Suicide Squad that I'm still pissed about buying. One thing I've learned after 23 years is you never know what's going to make you commit suicide. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today's Monday Nostalgia. Happy Monday. If you're new around here, on Mondays, we take a look at things from my personal childhood. And today, oh boy, today's quite special. Back around middle school and high school, I used to watch these reality TV shows on like the Discovery Channel and A&E and all that kind of stuff. It was just one of those things where these TV shows are semi-educational. So they'd come on, I'd watch them with my dad, we'd get a kick out of it, I guess. And one of those shows was the elusive Pawn Stars. I'm Rick Harrison, and this is my pawn shop. I work here with my old man and my son, Big Hoss. Everything in here has a story and a price. One thing I've learned after 21 years, you never know what is gonna come through that door. Now this show started back in 2009, but I haven't seen it in a very long time. It was 10 years ago. 2009 was 10, that was 10 years ago, what? I just rewatched the pilot episode, I was gonna watch a few episodes, but they, they pretty much follow the exact same format for each episode, so I didn't even really need to watch anymore, to tell you basically that Pawn Stars is simultaneously intriguing, entertaining, and kinda trash. Pawn Stars is about a group of Pawn Stars and their auditions as they try to make it to the front page of Pawn Hub. Wait, that, that's a different show. Actually, Pawn Stars follows a family-owned pawn shop ran by the Harrison family in Las Vegas. Rick is the owner and he works there with his old man, rest in peace, he died last year, and his son, Big Hoss. Yes, that is his nickname. Big Hoss. Each episode follows the exact same structure. Customers come into the pawn shop trying to sell something. Rick says, I might be able to buy it if it works, or if I knew more about it, because I don't know much about it. So let me get a guy in here first. This guy comes in, tells us a little bit of a history lesson on this particular item or group of items. The customer then tries to get more money than they had asked for when they came in. And Rick says, no, I, I have to be able to sell this. So you get this amount of money instead and then the show ends that's it I'm just kidding that's not quite it because that's what I remember Pawn Stars being and and that's what made the show interesting you basically get a group of collectible items each with their own story and a price and now we get to hear about the history of these things it's educational in that way and that's kind of cool I actually like that aspect of the show and if I didn't have a million other things to watch or play or read, I actually wouldn't mind having a Pawn Stars marathon right now. But here's where things start to go a little awry. So in traditional TV shows, you have the A plot. The A plot is the main plot throughout that episode. It might be the main plot throughout that season. This is the thing you came for the show for. If you're watching The Flash, you're there to see The Flash. But in order to pad out the episode and the runtime of each episode, in order to make it a full length episode of that show, you have to have the B plot and sometimes the C plot. And these are side stories that can be important to the A plot, but not necessarily. They might be entertaining. They might be boring. It doesn't matter. Either way, they're there. Well, did you know that, uh, did you know that Pawn Stars has a B plot and sometimes a C plot in their episodes? I completely forgot about this. So episode one, the pilot of the show features three different items that people are trying to sell. The A plot of the episode is about an old guy trying to sell this cannon. Again, another guy comes in, says it's worth a lot of money, Rick ends up buying it at the end. But then there's the B plot. And the B plot of this episode is about the old man and how he needs to go see an eye doctor. I'm not kidding. We get about five or so minutes dedicated to taking this old man 
to see an eye doctor. Can you read any of this? G D A O F, I think. <laughs> and like, I'm not gonna lie and say that this man cussing out his son and his grandson isn't funny because it kind of is. It just caught me off guard because I was curious about this 18th century war cannon, whether or not it would work. But here we are in the eye doctor. But that's not even the best part of the episode because we got the A plot, right? We got the B plot. There's also like this mini C plot. It's kind of like an interlude type thing. It just It's just like a few minutes, like all together dedicated to this. There's no intro, there's no outro. It's just, that's it. This is the C plot and it features Big Hoss, Rick's son, and Big Hoss's childhood friend, the best character in the show. Give it up for Chum Lee, everybody. Look at this guy. This is a man that peaked in, oh, never mind. Apparently, uh, Chum Lee peaked in the show. His life got really good, and then, uh, and then it kind of went downhill, like a lot, but we'll get back into that in a minute. So his entire character is basically the village idiot. He makes dumb remarks all the time. He's a very easy person to laugh at. And unfortunately, this is probably the reason why the show, like, continue for as long as it did like it he is that character that you would jokingly laugh at and say <laughs> i bet he would do some hard drugs and uh and then when you look up what chum lee is doing now um you realize that in 2016 he was arrested for firearm charges and possession of hard drugs uh specifically meth and i was like oh I was just trying to write a joke for the video, but this got real. But anyways, back to the show. This C-plot has Big Hoss and Chum Lee talking to some dude who's trying to sell this weird samurai outfit, but like, the dude created this outfit, it's not even like a collectible or anything. The, the, the pants part is, is sweatpants, and uh, he wants a lot of money for it, obviously. Nobody's gonna give him any money for that, why would anybody- oh, never mind. Chum Lee's gonna pay the bill for this one. Apparently he's gonna use all that meth money. No. Do you need me to negotiate this deal? Go ahead, chief negotiator guy there, go for it. I'll give you a hundred bucks. <laughs> I mean, what else can I say? Pawn Stars is interesting because of this combination of mini history lessons and dumbasses. Like, like, that's what it comes down to. Does the nostalgia that I have for Pawn Stars make me want to sit down and do an entire marathon of this show? I mean, not completely. It's definitely more of a, if I'm at somebody else's house and this show is playing on the TV and it's just like a chill area, like, that's cool. You could be watching a much worse show. You could be watching a much worse reality show for all that matters. So like, you know, if you ever have me at your house, you better put on some Pawn Stars because that's how we like it here. Pawn Stars, everybody. I'm so glad I made this episode. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Today's episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by the Your Everyday Nerd Patreon. I love making this show, and one of the biggest challenges that I currently have is that I can't dedicate as much time to the show as I would like to. As a freelance video editor, a lot of my time goes to editing for other people so that I can do that thing called paying bills. But I really do believe that Your Everyday Nerd has a lot of potential to be something bigger and greater. And that's why I'm asking for your help. If you've been enjoying the show and wondered how can I support this show as much as possible, the Patreon is where it's at. My main goal for this Patreon was to give you something in return for your money. This is not just a donation service. Every single tier has something in addition to your regular Your Everyday Nerd episodes. For only $7 a month, you'll have access to an exclusive premium episode of the show every single month. These episodes will be more involved than your traditional episode. They'll have a lot more work put into them, hopefully will be a lot more entertaining, and they'll definitely be worth it. Every premium episode is exclusive to Patreon only for six months. After the six months, it'll go out to the public, but you'll have access to the entire back catalog as long as you're a subscriber. 
Along with the premium episodes, you'll also be a part of the decision process of the show moving forward. You'll be credited in the end card of new episodes, have access to any Patreon exclusive content like lists, extra reviews, and all that good stuff, and have access to the patron only Discord channel. Thank you again for watching and for supporting your everyday nerd. That's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. For whatever reason you didn't like the video, you can hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts about Pawn Stars are. If there are any other shows like this you want me to look at, if I've seen them when I was a child, I'll, I'll do them on Nostalgia Monday if I haven't seen it. It'll probably go over Feels Bad Friday because most of these shows are bad. This one, the Pawn Stars, it's not that bad of a show. I'll, I'll give you that. Go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.